All right, hello everyone. So today we got the test fire. We were able to access it a little bit, try out some stuff, but for now I wanted to do a quick video on something that is very important, which is that we know every single weapon kit for every single weapon in the launch of the game, even stuff not available in the test fire. So subscribe if you enjoy and let's get into it. Sploosh is a hybrid of its vanilla and Sploosh 7 kits. The Sploosh 7 was a good niche in Rainmaker and a top tier in that mode. It probably will still be good in there, but not as good because the bomb can't poke as much. Junior has Splat Bomb and Big Bubbler. I don't really like Big Bubbler on it because I think that's better with weapons that can be more more aggressive, especially since now we know that enemies can just walk through the big bubbler shield, so I'm not sure how well it'd work on this weapon, but it should still be a nice beginner weapon. Aerospray has Fizzy Reef Slider, Fizzy being very good for long distance paint, something Aerospray doesn't really have since it paints close to it, and Reef Slider to get in. This is a very weird supportive aggressive kit, and yes, it's 200p, almost everything is 200p. I'll get this out of the way now, we do not have 150 to 220p anymore. It is back to 180 to 200, and almost everything is 200. They have increased the default, it seems, so special output is a lot lower, which is a good change. Splatoon 2 at too much of it. Splattershot has Suction Zooka, the Splatoon 1 T-Tech kit. It's fairly standard. We've already known about this. 52 actually got nerfed between the last time we saw it because now it's 200p instead of 190. Outside of that, it won't be as oppressive as KGAL because the special can't keep you alive, but it will still be a very good combo. It's based off the Splatoon 152. Splash is another kit we've already known already with Burst Crab. It's pretty good and it's cheaper than the Suction Rush of the Neo Splash that's most common in Splatoon 2. Zap is another one we already know. This will play almost identically to how 85 plays in Splatoon 2 just with a special that's actually healthy for the game. Pro will have some interesting combos with angle shooter but it might take a while to get it special outside of that there's another one we've known 96 we know now is 200 for vacuum which is a lot more expensive than the armor of splatoon 2 but again considering everything is higher points for special this shouldn't affect it too much and i think it's a solid kit for the weapon jet squelcher might have some cool combos with angle shooter but outside of that it's very similar to 96 in its role especially since it has vacuum just with a bit more range l3 is new with curling and crab while i like the curling and understand why they did it without mpu i would have preferred a burst bomb for a combo sub and i think crab is very similar to splash so i'm not sure how often we'll see this one. It's not bad though. So with H3, we can confirm that point sensor is back in the game. And truthfully, I have no idea why with how similar angle marker is. It even has the same lingering location as its primary effect. It's better designed and better skill wise. Point sensor is very bad in competitive play because it doesn't really do too much. Things like bombs could do paints, damage, give location by forcing people to move and a bunch of other things. Sensor exclusively locates people, which means it's not that worth it even with how cheap it is. That being said, Tacticooler might carry it to be niche in a few places places with some very good H3 players. Squeezer has a very interesting kit because we have seen this before in Splatoon 1, but it was on the Coral Coral Roller and Splash Wall on a roller that has to charge a 220p Zooka, surprisingly, nobody used. Squeezer, however, not only can charge it, but it's one of the best main weapons in the game, and I think the Splash Wall with Trizooka will provide some interesting cover, allowing you to snipe long distance threats even out in the open. I'm very curious to see what Squeezer players do with this kit. It's going to be very interesting. Luna has Splat Bomb Zipcaster. I don't like how similar this is to Octobrush, and I don't like Zipcaster on tiny range weapons, which they did a lot. And the reason is because I think your Zipcaster angles are going to be very predictable if you have to get two inches from your opponent. You can't really mix it up much. Clash is Splat Bomb Trizuka, and while it's not the Burst Bomb Crab that I wanted for this weapon, I'm still really happy with it. I think that Splat Bomb is great for poking, and it's always been good on it, but now it's not stuck with Stingray, but a special it actually likes. That can still deal with long range threats. Autobomb Big Bubbler is a good blaster kit. We've seen this before, but now that we know you can walk through Big Bubbler, the main use of this special to, you know, keep you alive while you poke around quarters is a lot worse. It's going to be easier to rush the blaster and kill it in close range, even with a special active. Next is range with Suction Wavebreaker, which I think is actually a solid kit for it. It's very defensive, so range has to be a better main weapon than it is in Splatoon 2, but considering the lack of ink armor, I think it might be. It gives a lot of information and can combo with the main weapon. I think it's interesting. In general, Wavebreaker is a very cool special because of the amount of info it gives, and information is one of the most valuable things with a special, especially at higher level play. It's why missiles are so, so good. Rapid as Mine Tri Strike. This weapon will be great when it has map control, but the second it's on defense, it's going to charge a special super slow, its sub will be useless, and I don't really like that, so I don't think we'll see too much of it. It's not bad, though. Rapid Pro, on the other hand, not only has a cheaper special for some reason, but it also has vacuum, which I think is infinitely more fun and cool. This will definitely be the more support version of Rapid Pro, which I like for it, and Toxic Mist is okay, it's not amazing, but it has its uses mainly as a get off me tool. Carbon has the same zip caster problems I mentioned previously, and Auto Bomb is okay for sharking people out, but let's be honest, Burst Bomb on Carbon is one of the best combos in the game, and it not having that is not good for it. Splat rollers, we've known, it's still amazing for it, and even being able to go through a big bubbler shield doesn't matter here, because if you're going next to the big bubbler shield next to a roller, you are going to die. Dynamo Roller has probably the best kit it's ever gotten between its games, a nice supportive special with Tacticooler, which is cool for it, and Sprinkler to provide painting your feet faster, quick movement, extra paint, and cover. If Dynamo and Sprinkler get a bit of buffs, this could actually be insanely good. Flingza has mine and antenna missiles, and considering good Flingza players spam vertical flick across the stage for 95% of the map, mine is a good sub for it, allowing you to stay 
alive and having an extra tool to defend yourself without awful horizontal flick is. I think this is going to be a very special spammy weapon though, so I'm not a fan of it. Swiffer has point sensor big bubbler, which just, I don't get this kit at all. The point sensor is, like I mentioned before, not very helpful in any competitive or non solo queue setting. And while big bubbler would be cool for protecting yourself, you can just walk right through it, which means it's not going to be that useful, arguably even less so than blaster because it's slower. So they gave good tuber missiles. They must have really heard all the slander we've said about the weapon for the past five years. And torpedo. It's a good sub special combination, and now that it doesn't overlap with Squiffer and Squiffer's kit sucks, we might actually see this one over it, which is hilarious. Bamboo got Killer Whale 5.1's help its damage sorely needed, considering we don't have main power, but it also got Auto Bomb, which does not help with its mobility or damage, which is the two things Bamboo needs help with, especially since, like I said, it doesn't have damage up. It's not worthless, but man, that's a letdown. Flat Charger will benefit hard from having 200p, since it can actually get it special, unlike in Splatoon 2, and Ink Vacuum Swap Bomb is a great kit for it, though it will need to be more aggressive than the Splatoon 2 Charger, but I think that's good for the game. E-Leader got mine, ripped the dreams of burst bombs from everyone involved, but that still is a nice combo. Mainly, it means E-Leader can't really be rushed down if it has its special out, since, you know, two mines, weight breaker that does damage, three things that can locate you, it's gonna be a pain. That being said, without MP, it's not gonna get its special very much, and on top of that, it doesn't really help it with displacement or moving in, so I'm not quite sure how good this will be, but I think it's better than what it has in Splatoon 2. Inkbrush has Splat Bomb Killer Whale 5.1. This is gonna be a very weird playstyle, because optimally, Inkbrush in Splatoon 2 would pick the Nouveau kit, sit behind you, set up mines, and then by the time you tried to focus it, it would baller to annoy the hell out of the team while everyone else just killed them. This brush cannot play like that, but it does have whale and bomb to force itself in. This feels like an ink brush that's gonna play like an octobrush, and I'm not sure how I feel about it, but at least it's okay. Octobrush gets a sub to poke and a special that lets it move around the map. Unlike the other short range zipcaster ones, this is actually okay because it has mobility with its roll, so I think it could be more useful and have a bit more options in where it wants to go. Slusher's kit is freaking insane. The Swap Bomb has good combos with it, Tri-Strike helps with paint and to displace people, it's everything this weapon has wanted. So Tri got a very strange kit with Toxic Mist Inkjet. This screams Rainmaker niche to me, because that's where the weapon, sub, and special are really good, but it's just strange. Not only does the weapon look completely differently, but now it's gonna play differently too with this kit compared to like a burst armor that it used to have. So Machine with Fizzy was good enough to carry a splashdown weapon into competitive frequent use for a while, and now it's traded that terrible special for Booyah Bomb. Yeah, so Machine is going to be very, very good. Expo still has point sensor, which is a shame, but at least with this weapon, it actually attacks over walls, so it makes somewhat sense here, and Inkstorm is useful for paint and damage. It might be okay on the other modes now, but it still seems like it'll mostly be a zones thing until it gets a better sub-weapon for it, but now it'll be even more oppressive on zones because Storm plus the main weapon paints a ton. Blob, oddly enough, also has Storm and it has Sprinkler. Now look, in solo key play, this is a functional kit. In competitive play, it's a really weird roll hybrid for the weapon because it's not great as a backline, but it doesn't have a support special. And it's definitely not a frontline. I really hope the second kit is a support one because that's the role I feel this weapon fits in, and this kit just doesn't really do that. So they kept the burst bomb a mini, but they decided to turn it into a full-on slayer with ultra stamp. Now, if stamp was buffed to not be bad like it is in Splatoon 2, I think this kit will actually be really good, but in its current state, it's not great. I still hope we get a support mini, though, because that's what I prefer to play. Heavy as Sprinkler Wave Breaker, it's okay, fairly standard. The main problem is Rapid Pro and Chargers will absolutely destroy this thing, and it has no way to stop those weapons from killing it, which is a problem. Hydra basically got the same treatment as Machine. Oops, we gave you a special that doesn't work. Let me give you one that's actually really good. I think this weapon will be nice, though it doesn't help that displacement specials such as Missiles and Tri-Strike will also be very good at breaking Booyah Bombs, so Hydra will still be very weak against those specials. That being said, this feels like a game where it could be an actual weapon instead of something where it has to move every two seconds and thus lose its charge. So yay! Ballpoint with Fizzy is interesting. Ballpoint has good range but only near it and Fizzy fixes that. It's also a mobility and combo tool it could use to be more aggressive and Inkjet fits with that as an aggressive kit. I think this kit will be more of a niche thing, kind of like vanilla Ballpoint in Splatoon 2. I do hope it gets its beacon kit back because that was amazing for it and a super fun weapon, but this game it seems they really want you to not just be a normal backline, they want you to play aggressively as well. As for Nautilus, let me just show you what Jared posted because I found it hilarious. Real talk, it was funny seeing every Nautilus top-level player on Twitter being sad that they no longer have an aggressive kit and are stuck with point sensor, but I think this kit is okay. I don't really see why you would pick this weapon because there's other storm options that play around the storm better, but like, it's still Nautilus. It's not bad. Doppel kept Squid Beacon, which would not be very good for it, but it has Tacticooler, which means it has one very weird niche. You can pop Tacticooler, 
there. Place a beacon next to it. Go get the buff. Go die. Respawn in four seconds, because that's how the special works. Quickly jump to the beacon, grab another one, and do it again two more times. So we're going to see a bunch of dapples feeding their brains out, and if they're good, that might actually be somewhat annoying, since, you know, even if you lose a few of those kills, you're just back really fast. I have no idea if this will actually be a strat, but it's funny, and that makes me okay with this kid. Dooley has suction crab tank, so this is basically just the better version of Kensa Dooley's from Splatoon 2. I really like it, and now that MPU isn't causing Dooley's to insta-die to, like, Bamboo or Pro or anything, it might even see use. Dooley Sculpture is probably one of my favorite kits. I love Wavebreaker for it. It works perfectly to help it hold down an area, which is something it does by itself with its insane mobility. It plays to support the team a bit more, and the Splat Bomb can actually be used now that it doesn't need an entire set of main power-up. Gluga may have the Kegal kit, but it cannot play it like a Kegal. Gluga is much more limited. That being said, this is still the summon special Gluga needs because it's not a very mobile weapon, so something that can keep it in place and alive helps a lot. I am really curious how good this weapon's gonna be. I think it seems okay right now, but maybe I'll be proven wrong. So Tetra's Autobomb Reef Slider, it is very weird to see Tetra with an actual special in this game, but it will be very strong, especially considering it also doesn't have to deal with main power-up. I think this might be the most buffed weapon going from Splatoon 2 to 3, and I'm really looking forward to Tetra players being able to enjoy the game more. Undercover has Mine and Reef Slider. I don't know why you would ever use this weapon, because if you want Reef Slider spam, you can play Aerospray, and if you want a good weapon with Reef Slider, you can play Tetra, but, uh, you have Undercover Brilla, which is not great, and Mine does not help it when it doesn't have map control, so I really don't like it, and like with Undercover in Splatoon 2, I don't see a reason to pick it until it gets a better kit. Brella has Sprinkler Tri-Strike, and I'll be honest as a Brella player, unless if this weapon is getting its damage reverted, this will not be able to kill, and I don't think it'll be great. It would only be useful as well Tri-Strike spam until something else can spam it faster, but right now, I guess it holds that title, so maybe we'll see it. So remember how I stated Blob was in an odd spot because it kind of wants to be a support, but its kit didn't let it do that? Yeah, Ted had that problem in Splatoon 2, but unlike Blob, they actually gave it a support kit in this game. Ten is much easier to slot into actual team comps now because it can fit a support role while still having that tanking capability, which is super useful, and I think it'll be way easier to build comps around this weapon, which is awesome. Uh, nothing new here except Tri-Stringer's 200p, so I guess it's not even gonna get very many of the Killer Whale 5.1. That's the only good thing about this kit. Voltana Wiper is a pretty cool kit. I've talked about this and Stringer more in my analysis video, so I'm not gonna repeat myself here. And Stamper has Zipcaster, which is hilarious because when talking about what specials would be good with the weapon, I said this. This thing couldn't farm a displacement or a support special, those wouldn't be good on it. But because it does this shit, it can suddenly get every special in the game that isn't Zipcaster. <laughs> and to clarify, the reason I don't like Zipcaster is because it takes away what's so cool about the Stamper with Burst Bomb, which is the Burst Bomb. You can't use it during the special. We don't really know much about this weapon though, so who knows, maybe it'll work. All right, are you satisfied with what your weapon got and what else do you want to see on it? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys tomorrow.